The results we see in our lives and especially in our real estate business are a direct result of the habits we form. There's a great book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little twist on this and I'm going to give you the seven habits of highly effective agents. Well, if you haven't had a chance yet to read the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I would strongly suggest it. It's a classic, and not only is it just a classic, but it just is so effective to really helping us build our business right now. What I want to do is put my own little spin on this and talk about those seven habits that Stephen Covey talks about, but apply them to our real estate business specifically. The first habit is to be proactive. What is it that the person you want to become would do on a daily basis? Get ahead of the curve, so to speak. Let's start looking at the things that people do that are achieving the level of success that you want. What does their day look like? Let's design our day to be look just like theirs does. Let's think about the things they do on a daily basis. Let's think about the, the ways that they plan for their future. Let's think about what they do to continue to stay sharp throughout the process and make sure that they're always growing. You see, when we get to a place where we understand that where we are now, in order to get there, we're going to have to do some different things. Now's the time with that first habit is to be extremely proactive in the things we're doing on a daily basis. The second habit is to begin with the end in mind. What are we trying to achieve? What is it ultimately that you want your business to look like one year from now, three years from now, five years from now? You see, the decisions we make today and the things we do on a daily basis, the habits we form today, that is going to be a direct result because of those things we do of what we see one year, three years, five years from now. You see, when we start with the end in mind, all of a sudden now we can begin each day with a progressive pattern of habits we're creating, they're going to get us there as long as we continue to trust the process and take the action steps. The third habit is to put first things first. What is the most important habit that you can create? I can tell you this right now. It is out there being prospecting on a daily basis, making sure that you're adding value to people in a way that continues to grow your database and also gives you the ability to deepen the relationships with the people that you've already done business with. You see, if we're going to make sure that we're going to put our first things first, we're going to set our schedule up in a way that makes sure that it's a priority. We're going to write in ink, not in pencil, that from 9 to 11 or 8 to, to 10, whatever it is for you, that we're going to be prospecting. We're going to be talking to past clients. We're going to be out there looking for opportunities. We're going to be sharing details about properties with active buyers. We're going to be talking to our listings and our upcoming listings about new properties that have hit the market and how it affects our homeowner's value. You see, when we get to a place where we prioritize the things that are most important, all of a sudden now our business begins to show the results of that prioritization. The fourth habit is to think win-win. What is it that you can do that adds value to your prospective clients, your past clients in a way that makes them have the opportunity to win more or to do more of what they want to do and gives them the ability to win? I promise when you put their winning first, you're going to win in the long run. What is it you can do? What is it the information that they need? What is it that helps them be more informed about the decisions they're going to make so that they can make the best decision for themselves and their family? You see, when you put that where you're putting their priorities first, you're going to win in the long run. Second thing is, is look, we're all better together in this business. What is it that you can do to create an environment where you're going to be the most collaborative agent, where that when someone looks and they see five different places that they're going to be showing listing wise and they want to narrow it to three, we're like, you know what? I want to work with Jimmy. He's always looking for an opportunity for us to win for his clients, my clients, me and him. If you focus on win-win situations, all of a sudden you're going to have more wins. The fifth habit is to first seek to understand, then to be understood. The biggest thing that I've seen that I've made mistakes with in my business is that I have an agenda going into a meeting on what I want to accomplish. Listen, you need to have an agenda. The agenda needs to be to identify exactly what it is that your client is trying to do and then give them the information in a way that helps them get there the fastest. How do you do this? First, the biggest way is, is if you're going to figure out and understand what it is they're trying to do, ask questions. What's important to them? Is getting the house sold for the highest price the most important? Or is it getting the house sold by a certain date so that there's no interruption to their family? Is it a priority for them to buy a house by the end of the year? Or does it not matter as long as they're willing to be patient, they can find the right place? You see, when you get to a place where you understand what it is exactly that your client's trying to achieve, now you have the ability to take that, utilize it in a way that you get to get the opportunity really to be understood on how you're going to help them get there understand what it is they want, and then seek to be understood. 
The sixth step is to look to synergize all of your relationships. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to get to the place where you want to go, if you're going to be all that you were created to be, you're not going to be able to do this alone. So how do you find people that will come in line with you, that will help you get there, that will help you achieve the goals you have, but also give you the opportunity to help them move forward? The first place I would say is to start with your team. Who is it that you have helping you on a daily basis? Who is it that can give you your time back? If you're a person that's sitting out here that is making $100,000 a year and basically you're a $50 an hour employee, basically you're making $50 an hour, why are you doing the things that give you $15 to $20 an hour activities? Why are you out there doing the things that take and cost you money because you want to control it? So here's the per first thing. Find some people that can help you in that way. That could be a transaction coordinator. That could be a personal assistant. Who can you synergize with that you can help them get what they want and ultimately it's going to help you get what you want? The second group that I would say that you want to make sure you're synergizing with is who who are your partners that you're doing transactions with? Do you have a lender that can depend on you to handle things a certain way and you can depend on them? Do you have a title company or a closing attorney that you work with that you've built a relationship with and now you know that you know that things are going to be taken care of in the ways they should be done? Do you have an inspector? Do you have someone that's a handyman? Who are the people that you trust and that you synergized with in a way that you know the level of service your clients are going to get, you're going to be giving them that same type of level of service. Also, last but not least, when you're synergizing, who are the people that you're offering to your clients as resources? I love when agents go out and they build a list of all of the people that they might need to service a house. Maybe it's an AC person, a plumber, an electrician. Maybe it's a landscaper. Maybe it's someone that will actually be the person that would be a caretaker for a home if it's a second home. What is it that you've done to build that list so that you've synergized with people in a way that you can provide the best service possible to your clients? The seventh habit is to sharpen your saw. We talked about in the beginning about being proactive, getting ahead of the curve. Well, we're going to end with something that also helps you get ahead of the curve, so to speak, and that is continuing to learn new information about this business. What is it you do on a daily basis to broaden your knowledge, to grow in this business? Who are you listening to? What are you reading? What are the podcasts you're listening to? What are the books that you're listening to or reading? What is it that you're doing on a daily basis to identify people that are in this business in other parts of the country that are doing something in a unique way that you can bring back to your market where you would sharpen yourself in a way that you can be better for your clients. You see, when you focus on improving yourself, ultimately you improve the opportunity you have to serve your clients better. Ultimately, the results you see in the future are going to be a direct result of the habits and the things you do on a daily basis and that you consistently do that are going to lead to that success. So what is it you're doing? What are your habits? If you'll focus on these seven habits we've talked about, I promise your business is going to grow. I hope this has been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.